We have plenty to discuss about the road ahead. Let me bring out my guest right now. Daisy and Danny is back with us after a while. We have missed you on our air. Yeah, I've missed being here. The convener of the National Women's Steering Committee and NCWSC. I think I left out a word there. Mm -hmm. And uh, also back with us is Professor Peter Kagwanza, convener of the S Council of Kenyan Professionals. It's CPK, like the old Anglican Church. Kenya Professionals Council, and then uh, for the first time on Decision 2017, the advocate Dr. Lutala Mukwana is uh, with us as well. Thank you so much for coming in. Pleasure. Uh, Pleasure. Daisy, starting with you, we're talking about President Kenyatta in his address today at the church said his priority will be uniting the country. Mm -hmm. But does uniting the country mean forgetting all of the people who feel that they, they were disenfranchised or they didn't have a chance to vote or all of the other issues regarding the electoral process? I think that is the key question because when you talk about uniting the country, we must look at why the country is not united um, and what brought us to the point of this disunity and polarization. The thing that did that was the politics and some of the politics driven by himself, his party, people who speak on his behalf, agents working on his behalf, and other persons from the other side of the political divide. So when we're talking about uniting the country, um, I think we need, first of all, to be certain what exactly does the president mean when he speaks of uniting the country. Uniting the country around what? Because uh, when you talk about unity, because I've heard unity, I've heard the words uniting the country, I've heard the words peace, I've heard the words move forward, mm -hmm. move the country forward. So for us to have peace, there is one key component of peace and that is justice. Because there are people who have been hurt, their lives that have been broken and torn apart by this political uh, contest and, and the electioneering period. How do we move those people forward? Women who've been gang raped, men who've been gang raped, students who were not even part of you know, the political contest, who were violated in their halls and everything. Uh, what does that mean? What, is, what, is, what does it mean? What does unity mean for them? What mm -hmm. does unity mean for the people who feel that um, they have not conferred their uh, legitimacy to the president? So this is, it, I, I think we're, we're just bandying words about, but it's a lot deeper than that because the hurt is that much more deeper and we cannot be casual about how we talk about moving the country forward because okay. even as we move forward, what are we moving forward to and from where? What are we moving forward to and from where? Prof, do you want to pick up from there? Hmm. Yes, I think we, we witnessed an election in August, notified by the Supreme Court. Uh, we went into a new election yearning period for two months. It went on and we had election on 26th. And uh, in both cases, a winner was pronounced and in both cases the court came with two verdicts. The first verdict is annulment, the second verdict is upholding and in both cases uh, I think the president was consistent on, on, on this regard, was very consistent. I don't agree with your ruling but I accept it. On this particular case I agree with your ruling of course but I also accept it. I think what I'm trying to say is that we have a democratic process and we must be, we must be ready to agree that what we had was a democratic process. And everywhere in the world, from the so-called mature democracies to young democracies, elect, competitive elections are divisive by their, by their very nature. In all countries, after elections and back on a healing process, and healing process is because today we have Hillary Clinton who is out of office and has more votes than Donald Trump. Three million votes over and above what Donald Trump has. Two, Donald Trump had more states than Donald. So their law suggests that this is the way uh, we need to follow. So our main guide, I think, is our law. It is not how I feel, it is not how really you feel, it is how our law feels. Are because you? we accepted it. You see the point? We, 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 we enacted the law, 
We are bound to follow it, and that is what this process has been all about, following the law. But at the same time, um, it is important to agree that democracy is based on the game theory, where there will be winners and there will be losers. Unless we are not really talking about the same thing called democracy. There and will be winners and losers, but the winners, winners and losers accept that the process was fair enough no, that no, I lost no, fairly. Let's, let's when look, one player feels that let, they did let, not lose fairly, let's, let's get that. that's why they did not participate in the, in the that, rematch. That's where I am. Mm -hmm. That's where I am. Because you can really tell a lie a million times, and it will never become a truth if the one listening to it is conscious. What is the now lie the, tr the truth of the matter is, if we have parties that cannot accept that uh, competitive elections, comp any game will produce winners and losers. And therefore, we have winners who have humility, and we have losers who accept the loss with grace, then we have a problem. Okay. Therefore, the principle that governs democratic elections across the world is the principle of accepting that transitions must be peaceful, and transitions must bring an end to that process as we wait for the next. So okay. de democracy is a cycle. All right. Dr. Yes. Mukwana, your reaction to President Kenyatta reaching out to his competitors, most notably Raila Odinga, he didn't mention him by name, but he said, let's all work together. Thank you very much, Larry, for the invite and for having me tonight. Uh, first and foremost, I must uh, concur with my sister in one respect, that we do not need to preach peace. Just preach justice. Once you have justice in place, the rest will fall in place. Number two, uh, President Uhuru's uh, welcome, or whatever he calls the olive branch to Honorable Raila Dingo the others, whereas on the face of it, uh, looks attractive and ought to be applauded, we know that underneath it, it is hollow. Because you cannot tell a man, let's have peace, without going to the very basis why there is no peace. And Larry, I keep saying that the biggest tragedy in this country are our politicians. Because politicians have institutionalized dishonesty, politicians have the institutionalized lack of respect for each other, and therefore what you see on the surface is really hollow. In my view, Larry, we must ask ourselves as Kenyans, where did the rain begin beating us? And the rain began beating us when we chose to bastardize and defile the very laws which are supposed to guide us. And there are myriad of examples we could give here where the government or the opposition, depending on who you are, you are scrutinizing, have just not respected the law. And therefore, for me, the president need to be honest with each other because if he's not going to be honest, the swearing in will bring in nothing special. It must be remembered that in December 2007, Honorable Mwai Kibaki was sworn in, but thereafter, the country engulfed into flames. And by March, they were negotiating a coalition government. Mm -hmm. So for me, Larry, it is hollow. The president ought to be honest. What we need to do is to go back to where the peace deluded us. And that place is called electoral justice. In my view, the elections that were conducted on 26th were really meant to put us in trouble and that is the trouble we are in. Okay. After Tuesday, I can assure you, we'll be in bigger trouble than where we've come from. Why? Because it is a swearing in that is premised on a shaky foundation. Where you have not listened to the rest of the citizens in the country, you can only move alone. You cannot move with everybody. And you can't ignore the rest of the country. I'm hearing me, but I want to... I'm, I'm getting a tweet now from David Ndi who disagrees with what Professor Peter Kagwanja said, and I want to bring this up. You said politics, democracy is based on a, on a zero, on, on the game theory. And uh, Dr. David Ndi, who's a NASA strategist, full disclosure, says that game theory deals mostly with non-zero sum, meaning win-win games. So zero sum games is only one and not a particularly eliminating case. Ndi, oh, <coughs> keep to numbers. He has problems with thoughts. He has serious problems with thoughts because Democracy everywhere in the world is based on competition. It is competition. That's why we in primary school, secondary school, we teach our kids to compete so that they learn how to accept losses and bear the losses and how to accept victories with humility. 
so that you don't be, 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 be beating the chest because, because you have won a game. Because you, you brought this up, yeah, let yeah. me define zero-sum game. For those of us who didn't do economics 101, <clears throat> it's a situation in game theory in which one person's gain is equivalent to another's loss. So the net change in wealth or benefit is zero. A zero-sum game may have as few as two players or millions of participants. What do but, you? How does that compare to our politics? But the, that is not how our politics is. It is not like that. Our politics is simply defined by our constitution that there will be winners and there will be losers. And individuals who voted, and by the way, the problem we have in this country, and what DE and others are conf confounding this country with, is that communities vote. Communities don't vote. Individuals vote. We are all protected at certain corners so that we vote privately and I mean, as individuals. It is only when the votes are counted, when these and others start talking about, oh, this community is marginalized, that community is marginalized. Communities don't vote, individuals vote. So this confusion of individuals, but at the same time, if that is how we, we accept, uh, we, 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 we accept that uh, democracy must produce a winner. Democracy must produce a loser. Mm. Then we can begin to discuss as a country that if somebody has lost, and we feel that there is a burden in that loss. How can we mediate it? Those are discussions we can have. I, I want to, it is not about. I want to weigh in on that. And I want to say it is true. Yes, that you will have a winner and a loser. But it is also premised yeah. on that you lose in a fair contest because the but democracy. Who judge fairness? Listen. Yeah. The law sets the parameters for the contest and the. Contest must follow those parameters, free, fair, credible, you know, uh, free from violence, free from coercion and all that. So at the end of the day here, what we're looking at, because, you know, you've raised the issue about the legal contest. And that legal contest is over. It's true. But that doesn't mean just because we have a, a, a judicial decision that people feel that they have lost in a fair contest or that the contest was fair. And I think that that's what needs to be addressed because what we're looking yeah. at, and yeah. I think that uh, uh, um, Alutalala, um, you know, uh, mentioned it, where we're looking at electoral justice. And that's what people feel. That even in a fair contest, by the way, when people lose in a fair contest, you accept defeat. And, but who and, judges and, the fairness? The fairness is, is ought to be judged by, by, the, by, the, by, the, by the electoral management body yeah, in this case. Is. But when the electoral management body yeah. is seen also not to be a neutral arbiter, yeah. that in itself is a that problem. That is where and the you problem know, is. And now the thing is, uh, Dr. Kagwanja, <clears throat> one of the things that you cannot run away from, because if you're talking about healing the nation, we must address some of those issues and we must be honest about it. Okay. We must be honest okay. about the challenges that we are facing. But we cannot just lay down the law when we know that for many people, and, 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 and I want to say this, that it's not just about the opposition and the political players. Remember that the electoral process is a critical part of our democracy where the citizens themselves get the opportunity to exercise their sovereign right to choose those people to whom they will delegate the authority to uh, to to um, hold public office in their various echelons. Now, when the people themselves feel that they have been disenfranchised by an unfair process or a process that seems to be skewed in favor of a certain political outcome, then that problem arises. And that's what, as a nation, and this is not just about 2017. This is about several electoral contests that we have had in Kenya where the people feel there has been a manipulation of their will, you know, and, and that's what we also need to address, among other challenges. But we cannot just speak about it as though it is a given that we are in a fair contest, because many people well, feel that it hasn't been a fair contest. Okay, gentlemen, hang on, hang on. I, I want to come back to that, but I also <laughs> want to bring in Dr. Twoli, who can now hear me now. For your first reactions uh, to President Kenyatta asking saying that he will be uniting the country as his priority and asking Raila Odinga and everybody who competed with him to join him in working for the citizens of this country? I think uh, most of the people who are talking about this, uh, you know, the kind of crisis that we have in this country, are cutting around the issue. Uh, the primary problem is a problem of resource allocation. The primary problem is the perception of a section of the country that they are marginalized or they are secluded from participating in their own affairs. And uh, we have attempted to solve this through elections. And this section of the country still feels that these elections are not free and fair. 
feels marginalized. So if you're going to attempt to unite the country, you must address the elephant in the room, which is that there is a section of the country out of this country, that they're not part of how we are deciding the So we will not unite unite the country by exhorting everybody to behave in a particular way, but we will unite the country by ensuring that every citizen feels included right. in the economy, feels included in resource allocation, and feels like their decisions are respected. And that if they go to an election and they vote, their vote actually counts. What I think about those are the things that we need to be looking at. When what somebody about... argues mm -hmm. that uh, in an election there must be losers, yes. Well, this is, this is really a tautology. It's a fact. But uh, we don't hold an election as an end in itself. A democracy is not a democracy as an end in itself. It is a process of putting people in a place so that they determine how we are going to use national resources. So if you do this process fraudulently, or if people perceive that the people we are placing up there, we are placing them there fraudulently, then there's going to be you know, no peace. There's going to be a crisis. And until you address that perception of exclusion and seclusion, uh, we are not going to have uh, a nice, peaceful union as, as a country. Hold that thought, Dr. Atwale. I'll come back to it. But Dr. Talala, you, are, you wanted to comment on uh, Professor Kagwanja's uh, point of view. Yeah, you know, Larry, I'm, 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 I'm getting a bit uh, uncomfortable with the professor's uh, line of reasoning mm. uh, because he seems to be really, to borrow uh, Dr. Atwale's words, to be scatting on the issues. Mm. Let's not try and be simplistic about the problem that is facing Kenya today. And let's not confuse our viewers. Let's just be basic. Yes. What is the problem? Mm. On the 1st of September, the court ruled that there were irregularities and illegalities and order that this must be conformed with. Come 26th, the IBC, in the midst of so many problems, which I don't want to spend time on, finally wobbled into an election and told us that now this election is free and fair. But we know that the opposing side had issues that have not been addressed. Indeed, the issues raised by the court haven't been addressed. So we went into an election that whose rules were contested. And therefore, whatever IEBC did, whereas on paper it gives legality to the president, and therefore the consequence is the swearing in which is coming on Tuesday, that only solves the legality section of the presidency. It does not solve the legitimacy section of the president's election. And Jubilee has been very keen to point out that legitimacy is not a legal issue that should be coming up. Thank you. That's what I'm saying. It is not a legal issue. It is about acceptability that the process by which Serious the president problem. has come to that level is one that was free, fair, and credible. But Therefore, even in the eyes of the population, that process is seen to have been a perversion of justice and credibility. It remains that. And Larry, the product of this is this, that we have a half a section thereabout which has said clearly that they do not recognize the president. Now, that is serious. Number two, we have an opposition which is relentless and it's saying that their singular purpose would be to bring down the government that is being sworn in the day after tomorrow. Now, you can therefore not talk about political legitimacy in such a situation. For me, what I think that the president must do, he must understand that if there is a win, he has won on the legal front. And Larry, both Jubilee and NASA will now have to contend with the blatant disrespect of the law and the constitution that they both engaged in the electioneering period. Mm. Jubilee blatantly used their numbers to, uh, to enact the elections amendment bill, which is now an act, and the president went ahead even to, not to be so honest to the country and say, I felt it was not a very good law, so I did not sign, knowing very well that it was going to be law anyway. So Jubilee has, on its part, gone around disrespected the law in their own way, including banning of picketing and assemblies. NASA, on the other hand, also have gone ahead to engage in acts which ordinarily would not be the best practices in terms of respect for the law. What will happen now is this, that Jubilee in government is going to have a difficult time enforcing NASA to play by the rule which both of them know that they have not played by it during the electioneering period. Okay. So for me, it is short and simple. 
the process of swearing in is a constitutional provision. <coughs> and this swearing in comes at the tail end of the provision of Article 140, which says that once the court has nullified, election should be done. Therefore, we cannot hold the end result in isolation without looking at the process. All right. And it is the process that I say, and I keep repeating, that was faulty. Unfortunately, last one, Larry. Really quickly. The problem that we have with the president around the people who I do not know professor's background, so with due respect, I will be fair to him. But every time you seem to bring out the real issues, there's this, there are these gatekeepers who quickly surround him and say, look, all is well. The problem is this, that what is at stake, either side is high. Jobs are lined up, tenders are lined up, ambassador position are lined up. So there will be no honest dialogue as long as the president's gatekeepers keep on telling him, that all, all is, is well. well. All right, Professor Kagwanji, we have an acceptability I, problem. I have, a, I have a problem here, and I, th and I thought I would hear more in terms of exposing the nature of our problem. Can I tell you the truth? Yes. It's the readership of NASA that has a problem, and I want to be clear about that. If you look at their history, they have never accepted any loss anywhere. So we either suspect democracy and possibly look for another model of governance, uh, or we don't. I do know, and I believe strongly, that they believe that the only way of dealing with the so-called real issues, what they are called real issues, uh, issues of problem and so on, is power sharing. But then you are inviting the country to break its own laws, because the Constitution is tailored against Power sharing, and that's what we are looking for. Nusumkate, kuotamkate, or whatever you are looking for. Now, let me tell you the truth. Well, the moment you start talking about resources... But it's also not true that NASA leaders have never accepted defeat. That's not that, true. They, 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 uh, I, can, I can do that. that. I can do that. I can do that. I can do that. It's a defective reasoning. 1997, Raira Odinga said he had not lost. 2002, they accepted they had lost. But that, that was Uhuru Kenyatta. Uhuru Kenyatta accepted he had lost. 2007, they said we have not lost. They took us to war. 2013, 2013, the court declared that they had lost. IBC declared they had lost. They said they had not lost. They, 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 but then they, at least they did not uh, right. take us to what, war. What is your wider point? Two, 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 2017. 2017. As long as you have a leadership that does not believe in democracy, as long as you have a leadership that believes that only them, who, when they win, that's when there is victory, 2002, when they are side win, then we have a problem. So, and those who believe that the only time, the only solution to, to loss is power sharing. Tell us what then happened in 1997. Now that you've gone to history. What happened in 1997? Yes. You've told us from 202, not accepting defeat. Tell us what he happened. He says in 97, Rela denied that he, yeah, he, he, he lost. Yeah, him and Kibaki you know, you know, at that time, they said they had not lost the election. Dr. Lukoy Atwoli said that yes, the problem is allocation good. of resources. The, and Dr. Atwoli, Prof, hang on one second, please. Yeah. Uh, Prof. Kagwanja says that the problem is not allocation of resources, or he didn't talk to that, but he says that, that NASA leaders will not accept defeat and at have never time. accepted defeat in the history of um, yes, politics. That's it. Yeah. yeah. I, I think I think that's a very sick. Uh, All right, that signal is very problematic, Doctor Twelly. All the losing parties. Doctor Twelly, hang on. I want to start that over all yeah. over again. We lost uh, we lost the first bit of what you were saying. I think you said yeah. it was simplistic. So start over, sir. Yeah. The argument is very simplistic because looking at the history of Kenya, uh, right from the time we started multi-party politics. The losing sides have the electoral system. And many times when we audit the electoral system, we have now the vindication of this was uh, this year's election. When after everybody dismissed and said these are perennial losers who will never accept defeat, the Supreme Court looked at the process and said the process was flawed. The truth of the matter is that our processes have almost always been flawed. And therefore, the people who lose the elections always have some ground on which to dispute it. But more fundamentally, I think we need to look at the same way you look at a relationship between a husband and a wife. 